What's up guys? In this video I'm going to talk about the fallout and result from the Kleinman v. Wright case as well as what's next for Bitcoin. So today is December 7th, 2021 and yesterday on the 6th the jury found that Craig Wright was um, not in a partnership with Ira Kleinman's deceased brother Dave and that Craig uh, only owes only a hundred million dollars but interestingly to the WNK information defense LLC not to the climate estate so we're going to see the other side you know the people who have backed IRA and the general crypto space try to spin this however they want but honestly some of the mainstream media even the crypto media has been quite objective in reporting what actually happened um, this is a win there's no other way to put it um, out of all the other stuff, fraud, partnership, all that stuff, the jury did not think that Wright did any of that, and nor did a partnership exist. So given that they were asking for uh, close to uh, what the uh, law journalist was saying um, from Twitter, Carolina Bellata, I believe that's how you say her name, uh, close to a trillion, they only got a hundred million. And what's going to happen with this hundred million is up for debate because after this one since this is concluded craig's ex-wife lynn wright has a pending lawsuit against ira saying that he improperly acted in this llc right so to start lynn wright and craig own 75 percent of the wnk which craig has to pay 100 million to so really he's paying 25 million maybe to the climate estate if there's a ruling in this uh case about the llc that favors the right family then he's not gonna have to pay anything um apparently there's i've seen i haven't seen evidence of this but apparently um uh, there's been talk that the australia courts gave craig a summary judgment in terms of ownership of this llc so you know everyone's saying oh 100 million craig's gotta pay actually no um the most he would have to pay as it stands without the pending lawsuit is $25 million to the climate estate. But even that's up for debate. So the other side might get zero, right? And you know, like I said, the other side is going to try to spin this. You know, down is up. Pet Rock is worth 60 k You know, same parallel, same thing. So it's expected. They're going to say whatever. It is what it is. But it's a win. Just like how they said when, uh, oh, well, if Cobra showed up, then Craig would have won. Well, you know, in any competition, right, or anything where it's someone against somebody else, if the other side raises their hands and doesn't show up and gives up, then the other side wins. That's just how it works. So, you know, same, same old, same old there. So nothing, nothing surprising on that front. Um, I, frankly, given how long the jury took to debate this, I'm surprised that this came out in a, at a victory for Craig. I thought the longer it went on, the more they'd be debating on how much to give and all this and that. But none of that happened, so I think it's good. Um, for me, um, I believe that this is a great thing, not simply because of the victory, but really because the space can move on. I feel like the space was kind of paralyzed. Some people might refute me on that because, you know, quietly building or whatever. But you could just see it, right? There was, I think there was lots of stuff, people kind of like, you know, waiting and seeing and paying a lot of attention to it and now that this is over i think people can move on get back to whatever they were doing and you know build this thing out which is what i'm going to talk about towards the end of this video of what really needs to happen in order to make bitcoin scale which you know that's nothing new right so um that's what i want to say about the llc and the victory um that's the big takeaway uh there are some other of course there's more lawsuits there's the one against mccormack which, as my understanding, is Craig already won that, and Peter's going to have to pay him thousands of pounds. Uh, so that's just, I think there's just some logistics cleanup with the rest of that case. And then apparently the one against Hollow Knot is in uh, a month and a half or so. So that'll be interesting to see. Um, if the meme that Craig will win all his cases, which is just not true, uh, continues. Because he uh, his ones against Ver and Adam Back were dismissed so i would say those have to be losses right so um he hasn't won all his cases but the ones where he's actually where they've not been thrown out he has won so it's good to see that 
and he said he's relieved. And, you know, uh, that, that's another dagger to the other side. It's like, okay, the person who actually might have to pay some amount of money, you know, if it's truly $100 million, would he really be saying, I'm relieved? Because obviously he would like to pay zero, right? So, you know, again, just ridiculous. So um, that's that's my take on that part. So uh, I just want to talk about my what I felt during this case. So especially towards the end, as it dragged on, as it wasn't decided before Thanksgiving, I was becoming quite frustrated, not with how long it was taking, but just that, you know, seeing the space talk about coins moving and wait, sitting and waiting. It's just it made me really it really hammered home the only way to really make Bitcoin succeed is there needs to be production and there needs to be applications built on top of it. And, you know, I think it's very easy, myself included, to get caught up in all this drama. And that's why I say it's great that it's done because now there's no more excuses for folks. Now, I don't want to make an assumption that all these other people were waiting, you know, because I know folks were still working on stuff. I'm just saying as a whole, it's like, okay, that's done. It's time to move forward. And I think, you know, signaling that Duro Dogs launched like two hours after the verdict, which it, it seems to be successful. I've played it. There's an article coming out on CoinGeek that I wrote about my experience with it and what I think it'll take to bring new users in and how I think that that's the most important thing. So it's going to be stuff like that, right? I, and I, I hope everybody go checks that out at DuroDogs.com. Um, so I think that that is a great kind of uh, signaling thing to say, okay, this case is done. Here, here's an application that everyone can use free to play. Get started with your hand cash and, go, you know, go interact with your digital pet NFT, get some items. And then, you know, once that marketplace forms, it'll be interesting to see if there's some value there. And, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to how all that develops. So um, and then another thing that's interesting is somehow the uh, transaction count on BSV is above a million a day. I don't know what that's what's causing that. Apparently, it's not crypto fights. So if someone in the comments can let me know, I, I still haven't looked into what exactly it is. But apparently, it's something new and unknown. So you know, I I think this is this is good, right? It's good that there's actual usage coming. And you know, now that this court stuff is over. So sorry, just checking my notes here. Um, another thing that happened yesterday was, of course, the price went up. Now you know. A lot of folks won't say that will say that that doesn't matter because there was a huge dump right before that. But it did have a decoupled, which is that's the key here, decoupled uh, price increase of about 35 percent. It's still going up today as of recording this video. Um, it'll be interesting to see if that can continue. Right. Because, it, again, it still shows that the market only cares about Craig's Satoshi ness and nothing to do with fundamentals, nothing to do with transaction count block sizes, apps, none of that stuff. None of that stuff matters. All they care about is that. So it'll be interesting to see if it matures a bit going forward to say, okay, maybe now we're looking at some fundamental aspects, especially with the launch of the Dural Dogs and the transaction count spiking once again as we head into the holidays here. So that's something I'll be looking for is how how is the price going to move because especially after that big drop in the rest of crypto, um, and, you know, what's going to happen now, of course, people think a lot of folks think because they were actually reading and listening to what Craig said. And I've speculated this myself about coins moving. I did the video uh, before the case about what I thought would happen. Um, you know, after thinking about this and talking about this with some other folks in the space, I don't think it makes any sense for coins to move in any way that the public would know about. Right. So. Either he's lying and was just being bombastic once again, which at this point is pretty comical that folks still believe it. <laughs> um, but or they will move, but no one will know about it. So um, a theory I have that seems quite plausible and, you know, I'm not going to take credit for this because if you really think about it, it seems quite obvious. But most folks watching this video, of course, some won't believe Craig is Satoshi, right? So if you were Satoshi and you had all these coins that were worth absurd amounts of money, it doesn't make any sense to move coins such that the public knows that Satoshi's coins move. It, that makes absolutely zero sense. Why? Because as soon as he moves an early coin from, say, 2009 
The market's going to try to cash out in front of him. They are so scared of Satoshi dumping on them, right? They've been it's been that way for four or five years now, ever since BTC spoke uh, spiked to a thousand. They're so scared of him cashing out, right? So they're going to front run it. The market will dump at least fifty percent, right? At least. So why would he do it? It does. He's saying coins move, coins move. Why would he do it in a way that anyone knows? It doesn't make any sense. You would want to do it. When no one knows what you're doing, you would want to move these coins, right? You would want to move stuff that people don't think you have control of. So this goes back to that uh, when the address list has been, you know, flooded and all sorts of uh, bad info and lies about it, right? So there was an address list part of part of discovery early on in the case where Craig and his team had to submit a list of addresses that he supposedly controlled. That list had all kinds of problems, and there's many different lists by many different people. It's clear as mud. Anyway, here's what actually happened, right? We don't know if that list is factual that Craig submitted. We also know that one of the lists that he had Steve Shatters, the CTO of Enchain at the time, to produce, it had a bug, which means it included more addresses than it should have, right? So once that list was published, someone saw it after the fact. And decided to post a mess, signed message over 145 of those addresses. I'll link to that in the description of the video. Saying that Craig Wright's a fraud, Lightning Network, significant technical achievement, blah, 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 blah. And he, he's not the owner of these coins. Something like that, right? Basically trolling him. So, of course, people, the crypto space took that and said, more proof that he's a fraud, that he's lying, caught lying in court, all this stuff. Well, okay. We don't know who that person is who actually signed these. And given what I just said about the Satoshi coins, isn't it possible that either Craig or someone who has control of these coins for him did that? Right? Because think about the advantage you gain from that. If you sign over these addresses and then you actually move them, no one's going to bat an eye because they'll be like, oh, that's just some OG whale cashing out because BTC reached all-time highs. They're not going to freak out that, oh, Satoshi's moving his coins. So if you were Craig, I say you have the strongest incentive, not the core people, because they already think you're a fraud. What's, what's, you know, you're just adding sticks to the fire. You're adding brush to the fire at this point, right? So who has the stronger incentive to do it? If you're Satoshi and you're, what you create, you have a million of these things, and what you create is spike to 60K, why would you move something to tell the market what you're doing? You want to move stuff with all the benefits of cashing out, of being Satoshi, without any of the consequences of being Satoshi, right? So it just doesn't make any sense that coins are going to move. And, you know, I don't remember if I said that coins would move or not, but I I think I just said that he... Um, that's what he was saying, and I believe I was said I was skeptical. So, again, I'm still, because I don't think it makes any sense. And we also see that a lot of stuff he was saying didn't actually happen, right? Um, <laughs> like, you know, that this is about ownership, and, all, and well, none of that was in the scope of what the jury um, actually decided on. So it's just interesting to go back and see all those crazy claims and see what actually happened. And we see that they're very disconnected from reality. Um, the last time we saw this, I mentioned this before, is that um, when he threat Craig made all these threats against Bitcoin Cash right before the fork in November 2018. He said, we're going to double spend exchanges. We're going to do all this illegal stuff. And none of that happened. But it made the other side react and made them spend money. But that didn't become clear until maybe months, years later. So it'll be interesting to see if he was just crazy talking, Aussie man bad, or if he had purpose in saying all that stuff. So it'll be interesting to see over the next year or so how those statements actually impact, uh, how relevant they were moving forward. Okay. So, um, and then, you know, again, with the promises stuff, it's just, you can't rely on what somebody else says, right? Because he's been saying all kinds of stuff that obviously hasn't happened. And I mean, we don't know, right? I mean, this guy did make Bitcoin, but that doesn't mean he doesn't lie, right? So, and for what purpose? We don't know. Maybe he's just lying to lie, or maybe he has, you know, I, I have no idea, right? I, I don't know what's in his head, but I think it's, you know, you just go back and read those statements he said before the trial. You see what happened. They don't match up. So, 
you know, what's going to be the fallout of that? Will it just be lies or will it be something greater? So we'll see what happens. Um, yeah, so I talked about the Satoshi part. Um, and, you know, I think this is what's interesting is that when folks saw that he won, I saw a lot of reaction that, okay, now coins are going to move as if it's just, you know, looking around like, oh, we're just watching the block for It's going to happen today. I don't think, like I said, I don't think that's going to happen at all, right? Because he, I think if stuff happens, it's not going to happen to where the general public knows what's going on, right? So, um, but I think this reflects a general issue in the whole space, crypt, not just crypto, but the, the earth right now. There's a, there's a big expectation because of how crypto spices, uh, prices have spiked and, you know, the general global, you know, what's going on in the world right now. That, you know, lots of folks are sitting at home and, you know, with Wall Street bets and AMC and uh, GameStop and all this stuff, people are making bets on things that are having these crazy returns and other folks are seeing it because it's getting posted online. So they think, oh, I don't have to work. I can just shit coin and gamble all day and get rich. And I think that's a very, it's very toxic to the economy and to the future for humanity, right? Because it really defies some very foundational principles, right? Of production and um, work. The only way to really sustain is to is through work, right? Because, I mean, you know, goods and services, they have to come through labor and through effort. So this idea of like buying a coin and then hoping it goes up, I'm not, I'm not saying people shouldn't speculate because I speculate, other folks do, and I think it's totally valid because it provides liquidity, they're taking the risk, right? And, you know, all that stuff is valid and necessary. But this mentality that Craig, because of some stuff he said in some Slack group, is now he's responsible for someone's wealth, it's just crazy. Like, it's just, I can't imagine if I was feeling that way and I just see a lot of that. And that's not just with BSV, it's the whole crypto. You know, they're buying BTC, they're just hoping the number goes up. I mean, you know, it is similar to investing, but a lot of these things, they're not investments, right? Like Ethereum, you, you, when you buy Ethereum or you buy any coin, any coin, it doesn't matter. The unit doesn't rise, right? The only way for the unit to rise is for you to earn more, you to buy more, right? Or you to work for and earn more. The, it, when you buy, if you buy 20 BTC, that is 20 BTC. Yes, it might appreciate in USD value, but the only way to get more BTC is to exchange some of your existing wealth for more, right? So it's not, crypto is not an investment in that sense, unless you use some app, and that's completely different because now you're really talking about taking on risk there. And, you know, that's investment, I would say. Like if you do token swap, TDXP, those are investments because you're, you are providing something to a service that they are getting value of and then they reward you in return for doing so, right? So it's completely different. So crypto is not an investment, but people are buying this stuff as if it is and then think that, oh, okay, it goes up in dollar amounts. That And, you know, it's also due to inflation, folks staying home, and just the general supply chain and uh, world economy having issues. So it's kind of resulted in all this stuff. I know I'm rambling on here, and I'll try to finish this up. But what I, the point I'm trying to make is, expecting coins to move in some catastrophic event is totally unrealistic. It's crazy. I don't think it's going to happen because it doesn't make any sense. Maybe it will at some point, but I don't think today's that day. So, you know, I, I just don't think people should be expecting him to pump their backs. And on that note, if you look on Twitter, you will see very little, if any, criticism of Craig from the BSV space. Funny how that works, right? Price spikes 35%. He wins a court case. No one's talking shit anymore. No one's talking about Aussie man bad. He didn't pump my bags. Rah, 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 this. So, you know, it's just interesting. We'll see how that sours or gets better over the next few days, months, years, whatever. Okay. Um, another thing I want to talk about is uh, him leaking and quickly deleting the statement about that he would not appeal if the settle, if the amount awarded was less than $500 million. Turns out it was. Craig claims he will not appeal, which I actually believe him on that. So it's interesting to see if did that impact the jury's decision. Because I know they're not supposed to look online. Maybe they saw it. Maybe they didn't. Who knows? 
But the reality is, it's like, okay, we'll give $100 million for this other weird thing. And, you know, he said if $500 million is good, so that's what actually happened. And if someone could let me know in the comments, I still have not seen any uh, final uh, decision made if the plaintiffs are going to appeal this case. Because given how our lawyers were talking on social media, they seem quite happy with the ruling. So I don't know if we're going to see appeals. And, you know, that's something folks talked about that, oh, it doesn't, that's how people were co kind of internally coping on both sides. It was like, oh, well, if Craig wins, they'll just appeal. And if Craig loses, he'll appeal. It doesn't matter, man. Appeals hardly ever work. And if, you know, maybe they would in this case, but it's going to take years. Who cares? No one's, ain't nobody got time for that, man. No one, I think the market will have the, as it did, will react regardless if there's appeals or not because, you know, whatever, man. Life moves on, right? Stuff's going to come on. Okay. So, um, I think that's it, man. Um, I just want the, the way I want to end it is because of these fundamental things happening in the world, it, it's really proven that the only way that Bitcoin can move forward is for production, work, and applications to be developed. And, you know, it, maybe it's sad that it took me to really, for that to hit really home with this whole case. But that's that's how it is. So for me, of course, I'm going to still do this YouTube channel. I'll still write articles. But, you know, I have been working on apps, but I really need to like double down and get to it. So that's what I'll be focused on. And I hope other folks do it, too. And, you know, you know, I do think speculating on the price of BSV, of course, is needed, is valid because there needs to be liquidity. But at the same time, uh, the expectation of another man's words to pump your in, uh, not even investment, your gamble, your speculation higher is really silly. So I think folks should do what they can to kind of move those funds such that they are an investment and, you know, make, and like I said, providing liquidity to an exchange is, is also good. But, you know, it's just the expectation being set, I think is not correct. And it's also causes some disappointment. So uh, for me, I just want to see us build this thing out. I want to see more apps more transactions. Of course, I want to see the price higher. And I think now uh, the space can just take a deep breath and move forward. And I look forward to what comes in 2022. All right, I'll see you guys in the next one.